Hey guys, Philosopher here, and I am giving you today a short update of where I am on day three of Dark Dimension 5. So, uh, you know, you can see some of my teal characters here, uh, and we can go over, you know, where I'm at and what I've brought into the different zones. So, <clears throat> I started, uh, we'll go, I'll actually head over to Dark Dimension. You guys can see where I'm at. Um... <clears throat> So here's where I'm at. I'm in third place right now uh, behind uh, Beta Ray Bell. You'll notice that these these uh, numbers tend to go up in 20s. That's because the each section is 20% of the total. So these people here at the, you know, who are in, you know, in the very beginning, um, you know, working their way through the first couple nodes. And then, okay, if you finish the first three nodes, you're 20% completed. Uh, then 40% means they're through city. I got through global. And I will be entering Cosmic today. So I'm going to show you who I'm going to pick for Cosmic, and I'll explain why. <clears throat> we can kind of go through. I'll show you my progress through Global. Um, so, um, you know, I've already showed you. We've already kind of gone through the other days. So I might as well just quickly go through each one of these. And I apologize. I don't have a, a mouse, so I'm not doing this quite as well as I would. So it took me, you know, this was the team I started with because I had accidentally misclicked on Adam Warlock and equipped him. So started with him in the beginning uh, and then just I didn't have uh, enough miasma because of that misclick to bring in Cloak and Dagger into start. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do with City. It was in flux. So I knew I'd bring uh, Anti-Venom no matter what. I had him, Sabretooth, and then a couple of Secret Avengers because I, I knew I'd bring them into Global. <clears throat> what ended up happening, I'd... It took me uh, more attacks than I'd like on uh, node two. I actually think the first three nodes are actually pretty tough. I think they were balanced around having some of the better characters. And so the first few nodes were actually much harder than the global nodes. In other words, having the three secret Avengers really helped me in global. But, you know, bring and bring, bringing in Sharon here, you could tell. And definitely the, having Sharon here helped me. bring. I brought her, Sharon in. Sharon Carter in to replace Sabretooth in the second node because I was getting frustrated. But um, the Secret Avengers did really well in Global, but they, they had a little bit more of a struggle here in the first three nodes. It took me five attacks. But even so, this is pretty good progress. In other words, when I originally went through uh, Dark Dimension 4, it took me many more attacks to get through. And I'm going to talk more about that when this whole thing is done, about how difficult DD5 is and what my advice is for everybody else. Because very different when you're in a racing situation, you're focused on managing your gear and, and speeding through it and all that. Uh, anyway, so City, I did end up getting the Miasma I needed for Cloak, so I brought in Cloak Dagger. Symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, and Misty Knight. Originally wasn't planning to bring in SSM just because he costs a lot of gear. I was going to bring in a cheaper option, but I was concerned about, you know, getting through quickly. So I, I ended up doing that even though he had a higher gear cost. <clears throat> Second note, also three attacks. I These were not optimized. I was This was obviously I was on my honeymoon in the car just kind of doing my best through the nodes. Same here, <clears throat> five attacks on the boss. For global... Um, you know, the global, I had the Secret Avengers plus Sabretooth, and I brought in Lady Deathstrike. Another one, she's slightly more expensive. She's a very good bargain for in terms of gear, but slightly more expensive than some other choices. But I brought her in uh, just because I, uh, I thought she was pretty good value for the gear. Turned out to be right. Two attacks, <clears throat> six attacks, and then what did this one turn out to be? Ten attacks. This one, you know, I was just pushing through. Now we're going to enter Cosmic. So my choices for Cosmic are once again focused on gear. So originally my plan was to use, you have to use mutant gear somewhere because you get a, you get a lot of gear randomly of the different origins. And uh, at least if you're racing, you know, you, you may say that in your situation, you might just save your mutant gear for the future, uh, which may be the right move to just not put teal gear on anything for now. But if you're trying to get D through DD5 anytime soon, you've got to bring in some characters of each origin. Uh, most of the mutants are global. So if you're not bringing a mutant to global, if you're going to use skill gear there, you pretty much have to use it in either cosmic or legendary. Originally, I was going to go heavily on mutants in legendary. Uh, and that's why misclicking on Adam Warlock was unfortunate because, as you know, there's some really great mystic choices. So for those of you who are wondering, 
well, wait, philosopher, are you going to bring the Eternals in? The answer is no, because not only did I already click on Adam Warlock, but then I brought in Cloak and Dagger, who are who are clo uh, Dagger in particular is expensive in terms of gear. So that really limits the amount of mystic gear that I have available to go into cosmic. And I need to, since I, uh, since I don't have mystic, you know, I can't, I'm not going to be going, um, you know, uh, mi mystic heavily in legendary. Cause there's only one other mystic legendary that's Ebony Maw. I'm going to, you know, there's, you know, I basically need to use the mutant since I don't have mystic gear left in cosmic. I have to use mutant gear here to get through. So I'm going to be, when we look at cosmic, what I'm going to be doing is we'll go to, we'll filter by cosmic. <coughs> And I'm going to do Kestrel, not because she's the best character. I mean, she's w one of the best characters in the game. She's She may not be the best anymore. We could talk about that more with the top 10 to invest in. But she's a good value for the gear because she uses half of her gear as tech, which is actually, you know, not as useful. <clears throat> so, And this is my last chance to use skill. There's really only one skill legendary is Nick Fury who's not very good and he's super expensive in terms of gear so we'll use that here <clears throat> so she's one that's going in for sure um, <clears throat> I need to use more skill gear and I'm gonna bring in moon dragon because she's cheaper in gear than Gamora and I think in the context of dark dimension she's gonna be more useful <clears throat> so there we go And since I'm bringing her in Dark Dimension, I might as well just do that. <laughs> All right. Um, now, what am I going to do with Mutant Gear? Well, it's going to have to be Longshot and Shatterstar. <laughs> These are the only real Cosmic Mutant choices. So we're doing that. Shatterstar, we're going to find Shatterstar here. <laughs> oh, we got to bring him up to 85. I got to open up. That means I got to open up some orbs. All right, I did not realize that I did not even have him at, <clears throat> at the level I needed. All right. Jesus. I apologize for that. Some people don't like when I use that term. Hold on one second. I've got to figure this out here. <laughs> Hold on one second. go I'm gonna see if I can get some gold here doing my Amazon coins thing that's why I'm it's crazy the gold shortage right now All right. All right. <clears throat> now we're back to Shatterstar. We will, whoops, we've got to get some more gold. All right. Yeah, this is crazy. But we got to do what we got to do. There we go. All right, so we'll bring Shatterstar up to 
85. There we go. Now you may be wondering too, philosopher, how is it that you know that you have everything that you need, all the gear that you need? I am tracking this stuff very, very carefully in a spreadsheet, making sure that I'm being very thoughtful about what I bring <coughs> to Dark Dimension 5. Okay, and the last one is File of L, because she's bio. You need to use bio gear. It's the same thing. Other than the symbiote, who are the bio, new bio characters you're going to use? So is this, you know, necessarily the best team in terms of performance within the nodes? No. But you'll notice all, you know, it's these are nonetheless characters that are going to be very good. I think they will be good enough. Uh, with long, long Shot and Shatterstar are pretty good. I think... Um, one thing I, pr I probably should do for purposes of this is I should consider switching File of Ellen Moon Dragon to Raider. And the reason why is we're going to want to generate some. Uh, we're going to want to generate some uh, crits for the team since we've got Longshot and Shatterstar. Okay. And then, so we've got that. We've also got File of L. We'll make her a raider. And the idea here is obviously these characters are not necessarily operating the best in a raider outside of this context. But with Longshot and Chatterstar, <coughs> Longshot and Chatterstar generate turn meter and they turn it they generate shields when they crit and so the idea is that the crits are going to drive everything and we will eat up those crits with kestrel uh pings and things like that we will or use you know get extra attacks out of kestrel that way all right let's let's give this a try <clears throat> let's enter cosmic i'll we'll get to you guys look at the first look it's the first time i'm doing it at what my team is going to look like for Cosmic. We'll see how they do. In terms of, whoops, I did not mean to enter there. This is me using a, uh, a keypad as opposed to a mouse on BlueStack. So forgive me for that because I want to change the positioning. All right, let's, let's quit out of this for a minute. We're gonna fix the positioning here. I think Longshot and Chatterstar are the weakest. So I wanna put Longshot on the side here. <coughs> Philovel will be beefier. All right, let's try this as the team. All right, now let's go in. And we'll see how we do. Let's give it a try. All right, see the crits? We've already got turn meter because of the crits on the mind control from Loki. And the nice thing there is we're going to generate pings for Kestrel on those defense down. But I'm waiting <coughs> to use the defense down right now because what I want to do is oh, I didn't, I was thinking that Phoenix. Well, actually, we want to get her down. We want to kill Phoenix. <clears throat> before, so we've got Kestrel here. We want to kill Phoenix before she, she takes another turn. Before uh, Kestrel takes another turn. So that this way we block the summoning of Dark Phoenix. <clears throat> okay, that's huge. Now, who do we want to use this against? Let's, I'm thinking we try Falcon. Falcon's really crappy. Oh, th yeah, this is going to go, this team's going to do pretty well. <coughs> yeah, but Falcon is very, there we go, <coughs> very difficult to deal with because all the turn meter, yeah, this is going to go very well. <laughs> I can already tell. Team is not going to do so bad. 
Now, it, some of you may be wondering what way philosopher. Why do you, why are you gearing Longshot and Shatterstar? This is not the best. They're old characters. Are you just in love with them? And as I said, the reason for this is because I need to use mutant gear and I'm racing. That's the idea here. And this is why I don't like having Falcon on the enemy team. Okay, I can't select my stealth character, so there you go. But see, the critical hit <coughs> for Moon Dragon is going to getting getting me more turns once again from Long Shot. More crits. You're seeing all the turns that I get. Every time a crit comes, that gets turn meter for long, you know, for long shot and chatter star and shields for both of them, which is really fantastic. It cr it really is kind of it's almost like a feedback loop, and you can see Kestrel and File of L. And Moon Dragon can be pretty hard to kill. And now we're going to have the heals coming. So let's see. Do we want to do this? I think we will clear all positive effects. <coughs> and look at the heal. I mean, the heal, I think, is going to be huge here. Yeah, and let's just auto, auto kill him, right? <coughs> oh, almost. There we go. We got the kill. And there you go, more critical hits because she's a raider. Get the defense up there, more crits. <coughs> yeah, this is really nice. All right, let's kill Loki while we got the chance. <coughs> but you can see this team is doing pretty well. And now I really think we're going to be able to use our basics and <coughs> recharge here, even though Doc Ock heals a lot because <coughs> this team takes a lot of turns with Longshot and Shatterstar. I think we can do this because this is only a two-turn cooldown. <coughs> Very nice. All right, so here you see Longshot and Shatterstar, and we've got these carn Carnage, so we've got a... We got to get rid of long shot because he is definitely the engine that makes this go. Good to get the defense up, up. All right, let's try to swallow him up with Kestrel. I mean, she does pretty good damage, even though we're dealing with Dark Dimension characters with a lot of health. That's very good. All right. All right. <clears throat> we definitely have to do something about the carnages there. All right. Let's try to kill this one. All right, well, we have a def def debuff cleanse, which is nice. <coughs> yep. Definitely in a spot where we could use some heals here. I should go after Shatterstar, I think, <coughs> and get rid of him just because he's there and low on health. Nice. Yeah, this team's doing pretty well. I mean, this is not, is this the ideal team? No, <clears throat> not saying that it is. But obviously it's a race situation where the focus is on getting through and on gear management, that sort of thing. 
All right, we've got to deal with anti-venom <coughs> because the reality is that if we don't kill the anti-venoms, they're going to res. <coughs> I ha uh other symbiotes. I have to s we actually have to kill both symbi uh anti-venoms in pretty short order here <coughs> or else we're going to have res symbiotes getting res. Hmm. <coughs> a lot of regens there. All right, we're trying to get this one anti-venom down, then we'll work on the others. All right, we've lost <coughs> Shatterstar. And uh, the symbiotes are getting on a bit of a roll here. <coughs> you can see that. And that's the problem with symbiotes. <coughs> All right. But look, this is a very successful first attack. First attack into the node. I didn't have any special strategy. I had no idea what was coming. I've never been in here before. I'm literally just making a video and clicking around to see how it goes. And we managed some pretty good damage here. All right. This is our first look at this node. <clears throat> and I've already gotten higher damage than anyone else got in this node. And you can see some of the teams that they brought in. All right, and it's partly because of ISO set up here. I got four Raiders uh, and uh, just an all around very strong team. And we've, we're doing pretty well. So uh, uh, I will continue uh, pushing through here. I'll be recording on my phone and my iPad. When I get home, you'll see more looks at each of these nodes. I'll do my best to try to give you guys a sense of what each node looks like so you can plan out your teams. Once this is all done, not only will I show you guys what Dormammu looks like and We'll, we'll, I'll show him off in a variety of situations, but we'll talk about what teams you guys should be working on for DD5. All right, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. If you got comments, questions, concerns, cheers, jeers, leave them below or go to my, uh, go to my uh, Discord, that's linked below as well. You can also go to my Twitch stream, that's linked below too.